Welcome to another episode of the Multi Millionaire Series. In the first episode, we interviewed John Lee, who's from the UK, and he shared golden nuggets of wisdom about business and life lessons. Hi, I'm Fran, one half of the Corporate Breakout Couple. In today's video, we'll go into the mind of a man who was born into absolute poverty, and he rose to become a real estate mogul, and he helped to take three companies public. He has won numerous awards for his humanitarian work and his philanthropy. So who is this man? He is none other than Dr. Patrick Liu. And as always, give a thumbs up and like our video and hit the subscribe button to join our YouTube family so that you don't miss any of our videos. So I'm here now sitting with Dr. Patrick Liu. Patrick. Thank you so much for being on our much. channel. Thank you. So I used to be a student of Dr. Patrick as well. We're learning about real estate. So today he's going to come onto our channel to share about his story and we can't wait. Patrick, can you share with us, you know, from your humble beginnings all the way to becoming so successful, how did you do it? I was born in a poor family. I grew up among the poorest. Can you imagine when I was growing up, I had no new books, no new toys, no new clothing. I don't even have a bit mm. until I was 21 years old. So for the first 21 years of my life, I get to sleep underneath my grandmother's bed. That's why if you look at my face, it's a bit flat. Uh, but I always say that poverty is a blessing. Through poverty, I learned uh, about discipline, focus, determination, resilience, perseverance, constant improvement, mm. and service to society. And some of these values have become critical success factors to whatever success I've achieved. Wow. So when did you first had your first taste of success? How old were you? Okay, I, uh, I uh, was born in a poor family like mm. I mentioned just now. I started running a business, you will not believe it, when I was in primary school. Mm. And I used to run a small little stall at the Sungai Road Flea Market. In the olden days, they used to call it the Thieves Market. So I wished up uh, my first MBA course was learned in the University of the Thieves Market. But there were honest, ethical uh, hawkers, peddlers, and business people uh, trying to eke out a living and breaking out of poverty. So it was in the in the tough and uh, dog in dog world of uh, Sungai Road that I learned what it means to be successful, what it means to invest, what it means to live a good life. Patrick, can you share with me why philanthropy is so important to you? Because we shared with our audience that you've done so much philanthropy works. I don't think I've done a lot, but there's a lot more to be done. But I'm, I'm driven by what I call a 6A. First of all, altruism. I believe that God created and designed us all to live well, do well, and do good. Mm. Secondly, uh, I believe in the authenticity. Mm. I want to be real. And to be real is to be able to go out there and help other people. Third is appreciation. A lot of people have helped me throughout my life. I want to be able to pay back to those people uh, who have been helping, who has helped me, and I want to pay it forward to, so that this will continue the wave, the tsunami of doing good. And fourthly, I want to be aware and attentive to the people around me. I want to be able to be sensitive to the needs and wants and the requirements of the people around me. And fifthly, I believe in advocacy. I believe we all uh, have an equal obligation to be able to right the wrongs in society, uh, to be able to address equal inequalities mm. and to be able to uh, correct the social injustice in society. And last but not least is aspiration. Mm. Call me an idealist if you want, but I believe if all of us, you know, do good, we can change this world. We can make this world a much better place for our children and our children's children. Absolutely. I 100% agree with your six A's. You know, Patrick, you've achieved so many great things in your life, you know, from creating businesses, listing companies on the stock exchanges, and even winning many awards. What would you say would be your proudest moment in your life so far? I wouldn't say there's one particular proud moment, but I want to tell you what I pray every mm. morning uh, before I leave the house. I pray that today I will be given the opportunity to inspire one more person motivate one more person, encourage one more person, uplift one more person to live a better life. Let me give you an example. Recently, uh, I bumped into an old friend and for some reason, I just felt I need to talk to that person. And true enough, the person told me he was struggling in his life, especially in his new job. And I was able to listen to him patiently and then subsequently unbundled all his challenges 
and then show him how to be able to tackle one challenge at a time. And when we uh, parted way, I could tell that the dark cloud, the overcast has disappeared. Uh, there was a smile in his face and I felt like he really and more charged up to go out there and live a better day. And after that, he messaged me a really nice message. And he said, you know, thank you for the chance meeting and the fact that I've, you know, en enlightened him in some ways to uh, overcome some of the challenges he's facing. And I'll tell you that night I slept very, very well. I slept very peacefully and that gave me the kind of feeling that no money in the world can buy, not even if I earn another one more million dollar in another deal. And that to me is a proud moment. Wow, that is uh, very inspiring. And I always believe it's always the choices in life that lead us to create these moments. Because you could have easily said, come, let's buy you a cup of coffee, just catch up on old times and then be on your way. But you right. didn't, you know, you lent a listening ear, a shoulder, your jacket probably. <laughs> I, would have, I would have given him my jacket, happy exactly. to do that. Yeah, yeah. And, and that changed this guy's life, I, mm. I'm, I'm very sure. Thank you so mm. much for sharing this. What will you say is your life mission? My personal mission is inspiring others to greatness. I want to live for others, but not because of others. And I believe the more you invest in human lives, the better a life you live. And so I believe if every day I can touch one more person, mm. one experience at a time, one day at a time, I believe we can uh, create a tsunami of good and make this world a much better place to live in. Can you elaborate the difference between because of others and for others? Okay, that's a very, very good question. I want to be able to live for others. Mm. Uh, in other words, I want to be other-centered rather than me-centered. Mm. I want to see what I can do to help others meet their needs, their wants and requirements and help them to live a better life mm. instead of focusing mm. on myself. Mm. And we all have heard this term, uh, you know, uh, creating win-win outcomes or win-win relationships. Yes. Uh, but people don't understand uh, this term. For example, people think win-win means first I must win, then you win. Correct. Or I win first and then I win again. Or I win more and you win less. To me, win-win relationship means I must have other people to win, then I can win. But for me, at this point in my life, I really want to live for a single win. As long as others win, I'm happy. But I do not want to live because of other people. I do want to live and be shaped and molded by what people think of me, what people expect of me. But I want to live for the great for for the, the good of whoever I meet. They must be better off after meeting me than before meeting me. I want to be able to achieve greater good. Wow, this is the kind of life principle that you know. This is the only kind of words that Dr. Patrick can utter. No one else is able to put it so well all together. And living life for others is really a principle that John and I also we try to practice. And it's not because of others. And that was important because. I think a lot of people uh, put themselves first, like, like what you said. And when that happens, it becomes a very selfish reason. And when you put your, when you do it for others, you actually find that your problems become lesser and lesser when you focus on others first. Patrick, what I realized is that quite a lot of people, especially they've had a taste of success from the corporate world, they think they know it all. So their, their learning stops from there. But what I love about you, Patrick, is your humble attitude and your eagerness to always want to learn from people from all walks of life. Can you share with me why this attitude is so ingrained in you and why is this so important? Okay, that's a very, very good question. Maybe I should answer a Another underlying question, how should we live our life? Okay. To me, the most important thing is that we must be comfortable with ourselves. We must love the body, the person that we're in because that's the only vehicle we have when we travel on the journey of life. In other words, we must be authentic enough to realize we all have strength, we all have weaknesses. We need to leverage strength. We need to be able to ring fence ourselves uh, against uh, weaknesses. Mm. And to me, what is important is don't be arrogant or proud. Don't look down on anybody unless you're pulling them out from the pits of life. And at all times, you all should be humble. And I always say this, humility is the first lesson you should learn before you can learn any other lessons. And to me, every person that I meet can be a potential teacher, can be a potential trainer, can be a potential coach, a counsellor, 
you know, and somebody that can help me live a better life. Mm. And so if I'm humble enough, I can always have so many teachers in so many different instances to help me uh, reach a higher plane in life. And so that to me is very, very important. If there can be only one golden advice to impart to our audience, what would that be? That's a very, very good question. I hope I live my life by one value statement. The more you and I reach out to bless other lives, the richer and better our life will become. I repeat again, the more you and I reach out to bless other lives, the richer and better your life will become. Can you elaborate on the blessed part? What do you mean by that? I, I think basically our role in life is to be able to uh, value add to people's life, help them to have a better quality of life, help them to uh, be a better human, a better leader. And our job in life is to help them to be an asset and a blessing to other people in the same way that I hope I'm an asset and blessing to other people. And when we do that, at some point in time in the near future, our next generation will point to all of us and say, we are the generation that finally got our acts together. Mm. We joined our hands together and decided to put love back to where it should belong. Put love back into humanity. And by loving other people, just as we love ourselves, we can make this world a better place. And there you have it, guys. Wise words of wisdom from the one and only Dr. Patrick Liu. Dr. Patrick, thank you so thank you very much, much for, being. for inviting me. Really appreciate it. Yeah. And please like this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel so that we can do more videos like that for you guys. See you in the next interview. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye.